excited to do this. Uh, I, I enjoy raising chickens with President Danielle. It's kind of our little project we do together. First thing I want to do, sorry about my throat. I've been in bed the last two days, so today's the first day I've actually felt good. Turn that back on just for a second. But I can't see. <laughs> I'm going to pass these around. One is a chicken egg that I bought from the store two days ago. One is an egg that was laid for my chickens two days ago. And just kind of look at the difference between the two. See if you can identify which one's which. Um, kind of gives you an understanding of the difference between a store-bought chicken egg, the freshness, um, and how much difference uh, the, clear, the color, the, how the whites look, it's all based on freshness. And um, so that just gives you, gives you an idea. If anybody has questions as we go along, don't hesitate to, to ask. First thing about um, chickens is <clears throat> do I have the resources? They're not cheap. Um, if you think you're going to make money by saving on having your own chickens, you're not. You'll be lucky if you break even. So keep that in mind. Do I have the time to take care of the chickens? Uh, they don't take a whole lot of effort, but they do need daily care. Um, do I want the responsibility? Uh, meaning, watering, feeding, gathering eggs. What do I do with them when they stop laying? Um, what do I do if I have a rooster in my hatch? Uh, what do I get out of the work that I put forward? pretty obvious is you get one of the best eggs you'll ever eat. Very rich, much more color. If you noticed on those yolks, the one that was more orange color was the fresh egg. The lighter one was this or bought. Does that have something to do with what they eat? Has a little bit of what they have to eat, but mostly freshness because the store-bought egg is anywhere from three to four weeks old already. And the fresh egg, of course, can be just a couple days. Old, Even so. if you're buying local, like the, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be a, a local, like an Oakdale egg? If, you, if you're getting an Oakdale egg, especially if you're buying the Omega-3s, those should be pretty fresh. They're, they're, they're getting shipped in daily by Oakdale, which is, you know, a, produced up north up here so those are going to be fairly fresh and they're going to if you look at an Oakdale, Oakdale Omega 3 egg at the store with what your chickens are going to lay they're going to be very similar um, they're going to have the same nutritional um, even even if you let your chickens run around or if you keep them cooped up a little bit what do I do if I, it doesn't work out you know what are you going to do with the the chickens at that point. What are you going to do about the money you've spent? Those are some of the things you got to think about. The very first thing um, city ordinances is the very first thing you got to think about. Um, this is South Jordan City's ordinance standards for residential chickens. It's code 17130. This is the Community Development Department may approve requests for the raising of residential chickens and egg production. They don't really hand out um, approvals. They just make sure you follow these rules. Um, rule number one, you have to have a piece of land 10,000 square feet or larger, which is an R-zoned um, residential property, which almost everybody in these neighborhoods have. Our registered zone, um, meaning um, single family homes. So that's usually not an issue. B, 
Um, you can have up to six chickens per residential lot for the purpose of family food production. Um, the keeping of roosters in residential zones is expressly prohibited. Roosters as part of the pullet stock may be kept temporarily until such stock is four months old, which four months is basically what's considered maturity date for a chicken. Um, 16 to 18 weeks is when they mature. And so if you get a pullet stock that has a rooster, you may, you may have the rooster until that point, then he needs to, to be dealt with at that point, unless you live on a uh, zoned um, farmland property. Any questions? So six chickens per lot. Coop size and location, the size and height and location of chickens coops shall be adequate to the house, the number of chickens on the property. So, and we'll discuss a little bit about what that <coughs> means, um, the size of the house. South Jordan City and West Jordan City have quite different um, chicken zone rules. So if you move to West Jordan City, just remember theirs is a little bit different and the city has a different rule um, I'm not, at the end there's a website that takes you to the city ordinances and you can look that up for every city um, so keep that in mind West Jordan City only allows five chickens per residential lot they have to have um, a six foot uh, fence barrier between them and your neighbor um, South Jordan City doesn't really require that. They just have a, a feet distance requirement, which is through here. Um, the chicken care and maintenance guidelines um, just kind of goes through the, what you're required to learn about raising a chicken by the city. Number one is education and awareness, basically by the the health department, Salt Lake County Board of Health, um, making sure you understand about cleaning eggs, keeping your coops clean, um, so you're not impacting your neighbors and, and your friends and family with illness and bacteria. Number two, slaughtering. The slaughtering of or processing of chickens outdoors for food production is prohibited in residential zones. So if you do it, you have to do it inside can't do it outside, and uh, it's not recommended that you do it really at all, but sometimes it gets to that point, and I'm getting to that point with some of my chickens, so um, it's about time for me to cycle through some new ones. Number three, food containers, storage and accessibility of chicken feed shall be so handled to discourage rodents, other <coughs> vermin, and predators. Keep that in mind. Uh, rodents love chicken feed. It's uh, got a lot of nutrition. Uh, it's highly um, helpful to to the rodents. So just keep it in a, a container of some sort. And number four is the most important one: nuisance to property or owners. Um, make sure your neighbors don't mind that you have chickens. That's basically what that's talking about um, it's better to get let them know what your plans are that way you don't uh, interrupt them in their lives uh, chickens do get a little noisy especially when they lay their eggs they, they do a lot of squawking any any questions there <coughs> any city ordinances yeah I got two questions can okay. you go back please <coughs> uh, yes so it's very difficult to put a chicken coop up five feet from your property boundary. I looked at yours, yours isn't five feet from your property boundary, mine's not. Um, but you do have a big fence, right? Uh, has anybody come out and inspected your, your area for following all the ordinances? We have had animal control out here before. Um, not per se to look at our stuff, but we were having dog problems. Between me and Chad, me and Chad, and President DeMille, we're not the normal families that have dogs, cats, and fish as pets. We have rabbits, chickens, and quail. And we had 
had some dogs, stray dogs coming in, and they killed some of Shad's daughter's um, rabbits. So we had the animal control come out. <coughs> she looked at it and saw what we were doing. We didn't really didn't say, didn't say anything. And you, you don't have neighbors behind you? I have, we have two. I, my yard is actually kind of split between two yards behind me and the chicken coop almost sits right on the boundary between the two, um, neither one of them. And did you ask your neighbors if, if you wanted, if, or did you have chickens before they showed up? No, we had chickens before. Well, I didn't realize the actual rule before I read it, and so I didn't follow the rules like <laughs> I should have. So, but, um, yeah, we asked our neighbors if we have chickens. They said no. We said, your dog barks harder than my chickens do, so we've got them anyways. <laughs> but, and but, but we did move our chicken coop from our previous planned area to accommodate them slightly, but yeah. I would venture to say it, a chicken is much quieter than a dog Absolutely. can ever be on. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a lot yeah. like the code for pirates. It's more of a guideline. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, okay, line. All right. Uh, can you forward one slide? You could actually solve that. Take them a dozen eggs. Uh -huh. Try these eggs out for size and fresh ones. Don't want you to get more chickens. <laughs> this one? Yes. <coughs> so, you know, you don't want to <coughs> cause issues. Our neighbors have never really said anything. Um, they their dogs are actually the one house that's straight behind us. They have two dogs that come within a couple of feet of our chickens, and they've learned to just live with each other. You know, the dogs don't bark at the chickens. The chickens don't go crazy. Go crazy with the dogs, so they've learned to. So, live with each other. hopefully, in your presentation, you're going to go into rodent control. I didn't plan on it. I didn't think about it actually. Um, but we can discuss it. Okay. Maybe, um, at the, maybe at the end. So, any other questions? Startup costs. This is where it can get a little pricey to, when you think, okay, I can raise eggs. I spend, um, my family, we have six kids, so there's a family of eight. We can go through a lot of eggs. Per week, and that can be a couple, you know, a couple bucks a week. But when you start thinking of chickens, the chickens are gonna, the chicks are gonna cost you anywhere from two to four dollars per chick. The feed, we go through. We have eight chickens. Um, we go through a bag, which is fifty pounds a month, which is about seventeen dollars. Uh, six to eight chickens will eat about fifty pounds a month while they're laying specifically. Um, we, we subsidize their diet with scratch, which is a mix of corn, meat, and oat, um, which really helps them just to be a chicken, just throw it on the ground and uh, pick it up and eat it. Also feed them bread, vegetables, fruits, bugs, grass, they'll eat just about anything. We'll give you my chickens, the one thing they absolutely will not eat is a banana. Gets on their beak and then it just drives them crazy. <laughs> so um, but they'll eat just about anything that you give them. Um, they absolutely love watermelon uh, and cantaloupe. They'll eat it right down to the rind. So whenever you have um, watermelon, just throw them whatever extra you have and they'll take care of it for you. So, so how, how do you decide how much you give them? So as far as feed, and then giving them the bread and vegetables and stuff, I mean, how? The feed, you'll, you'll buy a container, which we'll see out, um, out in the coop. It's a continual flow container, so they'll eat what they want to eat out, out of their laying feed. Um, you'll buy a feed that's a nutritional balanced laying feed, specifically. And they'll eat um, whatever they want. The rest of it, we just give. And if they want it, they'll eat it. If they don't, we just leave it there. So 
the scratch feeling. Scratch, they shouldn't eat a whole lot. Um, just a day, once a day, once every other day, kind of treat ink. Just because ink can get expensive if you give them that stuff every day. Even though that's probably one of their favorite <coughs> things. <laughs> Don't so, let it. It's like candy for kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of people will subsidize their diet with oyster shell. This helps with calcium eating strong sh shells. So as they eat the oyster shells, um, it helps their eggs and shells thicker, stronger. Um, but that's very expensive. I don't do that. That's just pricey. So what do you do to enhance the thickness of the shell? We don't really do anything. We just accept the shell. They, our shells are pretty thick. We break them open and use the egg. <laughs> yeah, I read that you can dry the egg shells and keep them dry. It's, they're usually fairly hard. Yeah. Our, ours have gone from hard to softer to thinner wall. Really? And so, I'm, and so I'm wondering what you have done. If they were used to be really hard, you bang them, you can play baseball with them almost. <coughs> and, and now they're. Yeah, they're is, is this causing a problem to be thick? Because we haven't seen that. Uh, yeah, we have. Chicken will step on it, it could punch you into the side of the shell. Could be the chicken. Really? Yeah. 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 This, they're really pretty thin. Is that well, just during winter time? Yeah. Uh, we have that noticed that in the winter time. Yeah. We have noticed in the winter time, yeah. Maybe that's. I wonder if that has something to do with daylight and, and that could be. Yeah. Um, that's their environment. One thing we will discuss <laughs> chickens are optimistic. So they will eat their own eggs. Um, so if they have a softer shell, we're having that real issue right now. Um, I have a couple chickens that love to eat the eggs. So they'll pick, peck at them until they crack them open. Mm. And then they'll eat them. Um, There's a quick fix to that. Kill the chicken. No. <laughs> <laughs> you want to keep your chicken. Right. You put cayenne pepper in an egg. And oh, really? I'm going to have to try that one. Cayenne pepper on the egg? The bean? Well, if you can uh, break it a little bit and stick it down inside. Uh -huh. and if you have a licking dog, just put that on your hands or wherever they're licking. They won't lick anymore. Okay. We'll have to try that. Because I've got, <coughs> we've got a few problems with that. So, and another thing with your eggshells, those that have gardens, uh, used eggshells, whatever your remnants, become a great uh, fertilizer for your gardens. Just throw them in and fill them up into your gardens. So we save all our eggshells. They're good for snails too. So yeah, I love them for snails. And what do you do to do them with snails? You just break them up, put them in, and the snails go across it. They're so, they're so sharp, it kills, it cuts them and kills them. Keep that in mind. Eggshells apparently have a lot of use. <laughs> Equipment, this is where it can start getting pricey. You know, and it could be $1,500, dollars $1, for a light, a feeder, a water container, chicken wire, a box, a time you put into it. Um, so water, waters, uh, dispensers, and feeders can range from a couple bucks to $75 depending on how expensive of one you want, whether it's heated or whether it's metal or plastic. Um, as you'll see uh, when we go outside, we have both a metal one and a plastic one. They're both heated. <coughs> um, our, our coop has electricity to it, so we can um, heat them during the winter. And so and then keep the water heated throughout the whole year. How warm do the chickens need to be during the winter? It doesn't necessarily mean how warm they need to be. It's how much UV light they receive. They need 16 hours a day of UV light um, to be productive. And so that's why most chickens um, will lay really well during the summer months and hardly at all during the winter months. So if you put a UV light 
subsidize our chickens with UV light uh, during the winter. So they get not only heat during the winter, they also get the UV light. So then they, they pretty much, this last winter we had some trouble with them keeping up laying, but last year they laid just as good during the winter as they did during the summer. So UV light's the important part. Um, they can cope with the cold. Yeah. What do you use for light source for that story in the North Pole? You use, uh, um, when we chick go out to the chicks, I'll show you. You can use either a 125 watt bulb or a 250. Um, they encourage a red light. Red lights are more expensive. Um, so we just use regular white light, uh, UV lights, um, with the in industrial reflector. So pretty, I mean, you can buy it at Home Depot for Well, with the government kind of eliminating bulbs, you know, and making us all use the CFCs mm -hmm. and whatever, are you finding a problem still being able to get 125 watt bulbs? No, not if you go to, especially if you go to Cal Ranch or IFA. Oh, okay. That they'll have those in stock constantly. Okay. So th those are the best places if you're looking for. IFA and Cal Ranch, Cal Ranch is kind of my favorite place. Um, all this equipment they have there. So, um, a coop can cost you anywhere from two hundred and fifty to a thousand dollars, depending on what you put into it. If you have parts to throw in it yourself, you can make it cheaper. Um, our coop out there, if we didn't. If we had to buy all the wood and everything ourselves, it would have probably cost a thousand dollars. Easy, don't you think? But it's got it's got quite a bit to it. And then electricity. <coughs> for though this is especially when you have chicks, because chicks need light constantly, the heat factor. Uh, it can cost you on a 125 watt bulb running 24 hours a day for the time you have a chick. It's gonna be about $9 a month on your electrical bill. And at the very end of this, if anybody wants this um, PowerPoint, I can email it to you. Uh, at the end is gonna be for those that would like to know how you convert a watt into cost. Um, I have the formula at the end. And that can work for any appliance in your home. If you want to tell your kids how much the big screen TV costs to run 24 hours a day, <laughs> you can figure it out with this formula and you can tell them how much that costs. <laughs> Chicken definitions. This is kind of important. The straight run. Um, when you order... I'll pass this around to take. This is... Kind of my favorite place. It's called Cackle Hatchery. It's in Missouri. This is where we got our first chickens from. This is a catalog of all the different types of chickens you can have. When you order chickens, if you were to order them from someplace like this or McMurray's, um, you can order a straight run. The problem with the straight run is you get the chickens that hatch, whether it's male or female. You don't know. A pullet is an adolescent hen. She's 10 weeks to, a, to one years old. Anywhere in there is a pullet. You can order pullets from certain places like Cackle. So they've already raised them to a certain point. You can order them that way if you want. That way you don't have to deal with the chicks. Um, a cockerel is an adolescent rooster. He's 10 weeks to maturity. A capon is a castrated cockerel. So you can get a cockerel or a rooster, have him castrated and he becomes a normal chicken. He just doesn't lay eggs. So a hen, a female chicken, a rooster, a male chicken. So a cockerel will become a rooster once he hits maturity at about 16 weeks or 17 weeks, depending on the breed. And then sex link, which is the type of chicken, the adult chickens I have, uh, is a breed of chicken that hatches chicks which are color identifiable between male and female. 
Okay, it's a mixed breed, sex links are mixed breeds, which um, allow the hatched chicks to come out different colors for a male and a female. Whereas a non-sex link chicken, they all look the same, and there's no way to identify them without until they start growing. So, okay, any questions there? Why would anybody want to cap on? Yeah. I don't know. It would cost you money to have it cash why would anyway. Maybe, so. maybe, I mean, there You're the only one in the neighborhood with one. That's sort of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Raise it to eat that. So I'll pass this around if you want to take a look at it. Um, this is where we first ordered our chicks from. Uh, we ordered them. You have to order them by 15 minimum. And they send you 16 in case one dies, because you're guaranteed 15. They come straight through the U.S. mail. Um, the postal post office called us at like four in the four in the, four in the morning and said your chickens are here. Come get them now. <laughs> so, um, but places like that give you a wide variety of colors, styles, every kind of chicken you can think of. Whereas if you go to IFA or Cow Ranch, you're pretty limited to the type of chicken you can, you can raise. So. so if the city only allowed six and you got 16, what do you do? We have lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you can either have lunch or we gave ours away. We, sure. okay. I put on Facebook, it didn't take but a couple of hours before somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to know the answer to this question. But so, since you can only keep the female chickens, what do you do with the wrong colored chickens? Baby chicks. You can either, some I people will put them on uh, <laughs> KSL. Oh. <laughs> you can KSL them. Hopefully somebody needs a rooster somewhere. Because you can't have a rooster in something. Well, you could oh. if you had a big enough property. Oh, enough property. Um, or, yeah, Sunday dinner. Okay. Yes. Um, what about the kind of chicken, I mean, the breed, like Longhorn for laying eggs, or Rhode Island Red, or is there a certain... We're going we're to get to that here in just a second. Okay. Uh, I'll go over that. Chicks to hens. New chicks can be anywhere from two days old to a week, when, especially if you go to Cal Ranch or IFA. They usually don't last very long there, so they're only a couple days old. Um, most of the time, they're shipped out the day they're hatched to wherever. If you're buying them from a hatchery, they ship them out the next morning that they're hatched, and you get them within two days. If you go to IFA, like the new chicks we have, they came in on Wednesday. And we had them Wednesday night, actually, or something like that. So... They're not very old. Chicks need to start out at 95 degrees and decrease by 5 degrees until the temps in surrounding area increases or until they're 10 weeks old. Um, so usually by the time they start getting bigger, the temperatures are starting to warm up so it starts to balance out. Decreasing so 5 degrees each day, each week? Each week. Each week. Each week. So, and they, they start to get pretty hardy after a month or so. They start getting their real wings, their real feathers. So, so does that mean this is seasonal in terms of when you start? Yes, this, this will be. When you, when you enter this process? The, in most cases, you're, people will start in the spring. You know, this is the prime time to start with chicks for most people. That's why. Um, the temperatures start equaling out, but say you start in July, you're not going to really have to deal with this much. If you just have them in your garage, it's going to be quite warm for them in there without any light. Or, so uh, you decrease it five degrees every week? Every week. Every week. Mm -hmm. And they'll regulate themselves. Uh, if they're cold, they'll sit under the heat lamp. If they're warm, they'll, they'll get away from it. So they know how to regulate themselves. Do you do that in the house? You can. Our first go-round, we did. It was just right here on this tile floor. 
Christmas. It'd be hard to keep 95 degrees outside, wouldn't it? But Even this, with the light? my current chicks are in our garage, and they're doing really well at this go-round. So um, <coughs> the heat lamp is the most important thing. Make sure it's close and they can use it. Um, always maintain water and food, not only for your little ones, but for your big ones. They must have water. Water is crucial. Um, and they'll drink the most disgusting water in the world. <laughs> and they will make it disgusting really fast. So, um, use straw or some kind of wood bedding and change every now and then. Just something for them to lay in. When you see how we do our chicks, that's how we've seen professional razors do it. They don't put any effort into it whatsoever. They do it as cheap as possible. We use a kid's swimming pool, put them in there, put some straw, and it's the best way to do it. So don't, don't spend a whole lot of money raising them on the situation. Because if they die, you just go buy a two dollar new chick. So, yes. We have better. We have had better luck to not have corners for them because they will push into a corner and kill the ones. Mm -hmm. So if you have your round, mm -hmm. there's no corners for them to back into. That's why I think when we went and saw a professional quail, he was raising quail. All of his were round as this. Kids swimming pools, everything was around me, so that's a good point. Um, take 16 to 18 weeks to mature. Uh, most breeds will live to be between 8 to 10 years, um, but, but many will lay for 7 to 8, but most lose the ability or slow way down between 3 and 4. And so just keep that in mind, they can't keep up the pace. Is that a function of how much they produce? Do they produce a fixed number of eggs over there? No, they don't. Or? And just a second, I'll show you what the, the average is, but it's just based on getting old. I was just reading that they're born with their eggs like women. So once their eggs are done, they're done. So it's not something you can They go into henna paws. Some breeds are a little bit better than others <laughs> in the length of time, but in most cases, there's not much you can do about that. Uh, production will stop during molting, which is normally during the fall. It's kind of where they're, they'll go through their feathering stage, getting rid of, getting ready for their summer or winter feathers. This happens with our chickens in late September. They won't lay at all, pretty much. How long does that take? A week or two, depending on the chicken. And um, as the weather cools, so does the production. They need 16 hours a day of UV light to be optimal producers. So that's why if you can give them some light at night uh, to help subsidize the day, the length of the day, um, it helps continue their production. So. Why is the red light preferred? It's a better, uh, from what I understand, it's a better UV light for them. Um, it, it's just a little bit softer on them than a, just a regular oh. white light. But it just seems, I don't buy them because they're expensive. And it's harder to find. We use 125 watt because I don't want to pay for 250. But uh, it's hard to find a red 125, so, and the 250 produces a lot more heat than a 125. So if you're raising chicks or you have it in the coop with the chickens, a 250 watt is going to produce twice as much heat in a small area. So I, I heard someplace that the red light will reduce pecking too. Yes, yes, that is correct. Can you say on like a daily or a weekly basis 
Yeah, I've got enough. So you don't run the light or something like that? No. Okay. Well, you probably could slow it down by not giving them, you know, just giving them the, whatever light they get every day. And it, it would probably slow down, but I don't know if it would, if it would be controllable for you to notice. <coughs> so they prefer red light over, say, a, a color balanced, uh, like a daylight color temperature for the lights? Um, I don't, because I've never tried one. I've be never curious. been able to find one that would financially make it. Yeah, they'd be expensive, but like in photography, you can get LED lights that are color balanced. Yeah. That would make sense for chickens, but I'd just be curious. Just I was thinking a lot before this class. You can get them that are <laughs> and then the, I was reading in a book that they said the red light is nice because it's dimmer, and so at night it gives them more of an opportunity to rest more naturally if it's not so bright. And when you hear the, the term um, pecking order, there is one. You will have a dominant chicken, she's the boss, and they all get in line behind her. Mine, her name's Molly, she's the boss. And when we go out to the chicken coop, if I open the front door to the coop, she will be the first one to the door. Um, and you'll notice because she has some bandage tape around her leg because she, she got injury and so I bandaged her up. So you'll notice her because she's got a bandaid on. But, um, and they do peck each other. You have to keep an eye on that. They will peck each other's feathers out. Say, do you separate them? Send them to their room? Do you want pepper on them? <laughs> 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 you, can, you can separate them. Um, my head chicken Molly, when she was had the wound on her leg, she was getting picked on because she was wounded. I separated her for two days. Um, once she healed back up, no one picked on her after that point. She was back in charge. And so you, you just have to keep an eye on them. If you see it happening, just separate them. Separate them. And, and, um, chickens are, are dumb, but they're they're very social. And uh, my chickens know exactly what time I get home any day. You know, it's fresh money. They'll come to the side of the, the coop and they'll just start making all sorts of noise when I get home. So. What about the quail? They respond to you? No, this the yeah. quell are skittish. They're they're uh, they don't even come near you. Okay. So. Are they just a pet or what? They're it? just a fun thing just to fun. have. Okay. Do and they the, make a big mess in the backyard? Or? No, not at all. Ruin your garden. We have are cooped up. Oh, okay. some wild ones. Right we have wild ones that come visit our cooped up <laughs> ones. <laughs> really? Coops. <laughs> 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 Your coop can be any size or any style you like. That's up to you. Um, the recommendation, though, is four square, four square feet of outdoor space per chicken. That's within a cooped area. Um, so that is. includes the run and the warmer? No, that doesn't include the, the coop box itself. That just includes outside dirt area. Um, one laying box for every two or three chickens. Our chickens lay in such random places. One day it'll be in a box, the next day it's in the dirt, the next day it's back in the box. Um, people are encouraged to put straw or something in the box for them. Ours just kick it all out, so it makes a mess. <laughs> so we don't even bother putting it in anymore. Um, so uh, you're they advise people to t buy a pretend egg and yeah, or something and put them in the boxes when your chickens are first learning how to lay. Put them in their boxes so when they sit on it, they get used to sitting on it and laying on it. Um, that helps them. So you might want to try that. I don't know how well it works. Um, any 
needs to have an ability for you to get inside so you can clean it. Um, it'll make a huge mess. Um, one thing we have found out, don't put chicken extra in your garden because nothing will grow. Or it doesn't grow very well. It, it burned everything, basically. If it sits for a year or two, does it? I, I, we, didn't, we are not even attempting. It was such a disaster. <laughs> Why is it that we use turkey poop for our, that's what IFA sells, turkey poop? No, it's, it's a hot fertilizer, like like uh, pig fertilizer and stuff, it's really hot, so you have to be careful how much you put on it, where you put it, otherwise you'll burn all your vegetables. Your vegetables can come up really nice for other, you know, toddlers, and they start to wither up. Mm -hmm. our, our beans do us super fast. Once the beans are mature, that thing is beans today. So, um, keep in mind when you build it that you're protecting your predators, dogs, cats, snakes, other birds, minks. Minks? So minks. Oh. <laughs> we lost four chickens. They all the heads off. Dude. Just the wow. Yeah, we caught the mink. They're good bait though, because that mink worth a hundred dollars. If you can fight off the feeder people. <laughs> So keep that in mind. Um, the PETA person, I think it's 200 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure there's a place for food and water, and just keep in mind during the winter time, the water will freeze, and they must have water, so keep in mind how you're gonna maintain that. And roosting rods, they love to roost. to make sure your coop's wide enough so they can spread their wings out every day. They like to spread out. These are just a couple examples of backyard coops. Um, they, I know IFA has one very similar to that out in front. Um, roofs, ours looks kind of similar to this. So that in mind, what kind of, I mean, some of these you went to the home and garden show, they have chicks, ducks, and then they have coops, and they make them, you know, for you specifically, but um, they'll paint it whatever color, um, they're, they're really cute, <laughs> if you want a nice cute coop, but they raise chickens, but if anyone wants that information, I got a brochure on it, and you could, I could email it to you, but they were nice, and they were actually, it seemed like they were affordable. I, I would say the average. This is store-bought egg, or brown egg, um, just to kind of give me an idea. These are, the white ones are store-bought, the brown ones were laid on the 19th, as you can see. Um, you can see the different sizes. A lot of times we can't even close our cartons because <coughs> some of our eggs come so big. Why are they brown shells? Why do they have brown, brown shells chickens. and green? There's one, an Easter chicken will lay colored eggs, like an Easter egg. Um, majority of chickens will lay brown. The secret is, if you can get close enough to look at the color of their ear, which is really flush against their heads under some feathers, That'll tell you what color egg they lay. Whatever color their ear is, is the color of egg they lay. There's no nutritional difference. There's no um, no difference whatsoever between a, a white egg and a brown egg. So, or an Easter egg. So, um, it's funny because we've been eating brown eggs for two years now, and the new chickens we have will be laying white eggs. And my youngest said. Ew, I have to eat a white oh, egg. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so, so funny. Uh, you know, it, that's kind of how it was when we first started. Uh, a brown egg? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now, 
no one wants to go back to a white egg. <laughs> but there's no difference. This color. And you get a lot of spots on a brown egg, if you ever notice. They come, there's different shades of brown. There's Ours kind of are polka dot kind of something. Some brown eggs, when you open them up, they have kind of like a little red mm -hmm. something in the blood yeah. spots. Blood spots. Or blood spots, yeah. yeah. That's exactly what they are. Sometimes um, your chickens will lay and it'll be quite bloody. Sometimes. Do you so throw those away? No, we just wash them off. So inside, would you? Oh, inside. inside. Oh, inside. Yeah, you open. Oh, up, I've never. Ours have never had. Did I you ever notice that one. with ours? I haven't seen any. Like I have never seen any with ours. With. Uh, huh. Do you have a rooster? Nope, that's why. <laughs> yeah, usually it's the fertilized yep. when they have the blue spot. Yep. Mm. Uh, that's just fun. I mean, it tastes the same. Probably higher protein. Mm. Harvesting gathered daily, sometimes twice a day, just that way to help keep them from pecking their eggs. Um, they'll come in different colors, different sizes, depending on the chicken. <laughs> Cleaning, use warm water, soak if necessary, lightly brush and air dry. Eggs have what's called a bloom on the outside. It's a protective coating around a laid egg protects from bacteria entering the shell. Now, when you clean your eggs, the more you scrub, the more the bloom comes off. Um, Store-bought eggs are washed very thoroughly, so they have next to no bloom on them. And so that's why most people assume the chicken egg goes in the fridge to protect it from getting bacteria. There's actually no specific reason to put an egg in a fridge. Really? It, it doesn't get salmonella or something? No. Not, not as long as the bloom mm. is maintained. That's why your How home, long does that last? It'll last. A home egg will last as much as two months. Oh, wow. um, Without the, the bloom off. With, if you mm. just clean it off a little bit, you know, because it'll sometimes they'll come messy. Um, if you just clean them off a little bit with warm water, they can last, you know, six to eight weeks. Without putting them in the fridge? Mm -hmm. We put them in the fridge just because that's what everybody does. Right? It's just <laughs> the thing to do. But there's, I have <coughs> never found any evidence anywhere of. So you, but you then wash them before you crack them open? Yeah. Yeah, I would always encourage washing not only your hands, but the eggs, because there's a lot of, they get messy, so. Um, yeah, if you notice on that carton of eggs, I think it expires April 24th or something like that. That's basically a month from when I bought them. Uh, my eggs will last two months. And then uh, don't let them freeze. That's a problem when you're outside during the winter time. Uh, once they freeze, they're no good. And then uh, don't let your don't let your hands eat your eggs. So keep them from uh, popular breeds. Yes. This is the city girl, okay? Like, so they don't all just lay eggs overnight. You just go out in the morning and collect the eggs. No. Ours, ours mostly lay in the afternoon. Ours, ours mostly lay in the afternoon. So you collect them more in the evening. Yeah, four or five in the afternoon is usually when ours are done. So you don't collect twice a day. Uh, well, I'll usually. Lynn will probably go around when he gets home from work, and then we usually will check check later in the day. But somebody with as many kids as we have around here, it gets checked quite often. Well, and it's not because they lay more than one egg a day. No. Average is about 28 hours. So you may, they may skip a day yeah. just because of that. Yeah, but you're if just. If you've got multiple chickens, then they're laying at different times. Exactly. Yeah. Depends exactly. on the breed. Some will do 18 mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see some, they'll end up, and then they won't lay at night. You know, at dark night, they won't lay at night. So you'll see them either in the morning time mm -hmm. or on their cycle in the afternoon. So it, it's very seldom will you, if you have six chickens, will you get six eggs every day. That, that's not going to happen. You may get five and you have one that's 
always on a different rotation than everyone else. Mm -hmm. So, just some popular breeds real quick. White Leghorn, which we'll see is the most popular American chicken. It's the white chicken laying the white egg. And that's the chicks I have outside. Um, it's a yellow chick, turns into a white hen. White egg produces 220 to 300 eggs per year. The brown leghorn, multicolored chick, mostly brown hen. White egg produces 220, 300 per year. And these are the most popular. These four right here are the most popular grown and the ones you can buy at IFA and at um, Cal Ranch. Buff Orpingtons, they're a yellow chick, they turn into a golden hen. Brown egg produced 250, 280. Rhode Island Red, which is very popular in Utah because they are very cold tolerant chickens. They come from the New England area. They can handle the cold. Um, they're a golden chick, dark red hen, brown egg produced 200 to 280 per year. Red Star Sexling, the reason I put that on here, that's the adult chickens I have. They're a tan chick, light brown, white mix, hen, brown egg, and they produce 220 to 300 per year. So, and if you, that catalog, um, that gives you that type of information if you've ever looked, went on their website. There's a couple websites for you. Um, South Jordan City um, website. Sterlingcodifers.com code book. This is where you find all city codes. Um, so if you want to look up uh, any city code a city in the state of Utah, that's where it's at. Um, most city sites only have a certain portion of city codes, so you don't get to see everything. Sterling Codifers is the actual company that controls all. Mm -hmm. Cackle Hatchery, probably one of the best hatcheries in America, along with McMurray's. Um, a good place to learn some in basic information. Backyardchickens.com, almanac.com, and you can always go to IFA stores in Cal Ranch. Yeah, they can have, help you answer questions or whatever. Um, here's a, the electrical cost use, usage. Just to give you an idea, you take your appliance, whatever watt it is, and you divide it by a thousand, that gives you kilowatts. Kilowatts times the hours ran gives you a kilowatt hour, kilowatt hour times um, whatever Rocky Mountain Power is charging at, the point, at that point, and that's your electrical cost. So any electrical appliance you have, you can figure out that. This is an example of how that works. So, any questions? And Justin, you said you would email us this PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have a list or yes, something? Yes, and grab a piece pass, of paper. And pass around and... Yes. I have one. Yes. So if you want to have like kids around this stuff, the best thing to do is just have them wash their hands a lot. Yes. If if they handle, um, it's it's encouraged not to um, handle the chicks early on because of disease and um, bacteria that the chicks can get, plus humans can get. Um, once they get a little bit older, then you're encouraged to, to kind of become more, um, one side encourages to handle your chicks once they get to about a month old, let them get to know you. And then they, uh, once they know you, they, they'll let you be around more often and, and aren't as skittish. Um, some chicks, chickens are peckers. Um, some don't like you taking their eggs. Most of these brands that you get at the local stores um, are very friendly chickens. Um, mine don't peck at all. They did when they were juveniles. And that's just because they didn't know any better. But uh, now you can just pick them up and they just. Did you do any training to get them to not peck? No, they just stopped. They just, they just stopped. I'm kind of like just getting to keep handling them. Right? Yeah, just being around them. Um, you know, we, the kids love to feed them blades of grass because they love grass and weeds or whatever. The kids will pick it and just hand it to them through the fence, the chicken wire. 
and it just helps the kids to get used to them and, and the chickens used to people being around them all the time. And so, man. Just gonna say is the chickens actually do a lot better to have a place to run. But our problem around here is all the competition for life, like dogs and cats and different things. So if you could find a space where you could let them run once in a while, but they will eat your garden up. But they'll also eat all the bugs. Um, so you just have to see what you want to do with it. So we just haul the stuff into the, the coop for them. We don't let them run out. Do you ever let yours out just to? A little bit, not much, because they're right next to the garden. And once the garden gets going, they will we'll clean it eat up. it down to the root. <laughs> will they run away? No. They'll stay in the yard? Or they they will stay within a certain distance of the coop. And as soon as, <coughs> if you were to let your chickens run around your yard, as soon as nightfall starts to become sunset, they will go directly to their coop. Oh, they know sweet. exactly where they are. You don't have to <laughs> round them up, they'll go there on their own. Mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how, if you have a dog, how do you, how do you do that? Will the dog automatically just try to go for the chickens? Will they? Depends on the dog. I think if they get used to each other, they become friends, and then I think you're fine after that. Because as kids, we used to have dogs and chickens, and the chickens run wild all the time, and they were just fine. I think you just have to get used to being together, making friends. So I, I had a, a, um, another person that I learned chickens from, and he told me to, that you have to dig down and put the chicken wire at least like a foot because the dogs and whatever else is out there will dig down to get into the chicken coop. Did you do that? I've we didn't from. do that, but I know that's what a lot of people will do is to put ours, when you see the, our coop, um, ours has a about a foot high board that goes all the way around the bottom of the coop, so most animals can't put their paws or anything, at least it Mainly because the cats can't reach in the wire and grab a chick or something and start dragging them out. We also have a, light, a layer of brick under between the mm -hmm. roof itself and the ground. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of built a brick foundation that we put the coop on top of. So those ones that you can see at like IFA where they move around the yard don't have that kind of protection, is there? Mm -hmm. No. And, okay, so you were going to ask about the rats. Was it you? Was it you? Rodents. 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 Um, we haven't really had rodent problems. No, we, I feed them once in a while. <laughs> we, we do put out, we have rat <laughs> issues, <laughs> so <laughs> we've put <laughs> uh, poisons out for the rats because they can cause some real issues with your chickens. Uh, but be very careful if you do put poisons out that your chickens don't get our kids out. And then you have dogs. It's for your dogs or whatever other animals you have around the house. So you kind of go into the pen, the, the rats? We, we kind of controlled it before our chickens were moved outside. Um, so but I have not noticed in a couple of years having this bunch that, that we've had any problems with it at all. So I'm sure there are mice that get in once in a while and pick up the, the scraps that are knocked on the floor or the on the ground from the, the feeder. I'm sure they enjoy that, but if they get off to the side and get some of the bait we've set for the other things, I think it takes care of Thank you. Okay. Yes. Justin, okay. So, when it comes time to slaughter your chickens, <laughs> you might be doing it yourself, but if you're not inclined to do it yourself, where can you take them? Can you I'll take, take them somewhere? Or do you want, do you want the chicken back? Or? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Is there a place? Yes. Is there some place we can take our chickens? Well, I think I have quite the spring. I think Brother Irene will just set a place up and he'll do it for all of us. We're on a 50 50. He'll do two and give you one back. <laughs> yeah, the, only, fair. the only problem when they slaughter your hen layers that they become pretty tough, you can only use them for certain. So I mean, the older they get, 
bit, the tougher and the, the flavor is gone. And so it makes it very difficult to... Yeah, once they start laying, I wouldn't eat it. So, so what, what do you do? do? So, yeah. <laughs> well, so what do I you heard do? that people will buy them as stewing chickens. Like, you just put them on KSL, it's real cheap, and people will buy them awesome. to feed their families, but that's not necessarily... If you don't want to eat it, someone will eat it. <laughs> A, a blog I read the other day, that's what they encouraged. Some people like to just stew it up and put it in some kind of broth. broth. Mm -hmm. so. Well, what do you do? Um, we haven't got to that point oh, yet. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I my, my claim to fame yes. is I'm on my second back to chickens, and one is A, never died, and one I've never had to kill one. So. Okay. Um, Did this get off the so but when we used to raise them before, um, that's what we did is use them for stewing chickens. Uh -huh. I'm not in a fan of having that anymore. Oh. Okay. What do you do when you go on vacation? You have to have a babysitter. Mm -hmm. Every single day? Yeah. You can't yeah. leave them a couple of days? You may be able to leave them a couple of days if you have plenty of food. You, you can regulate and see how much uh, food it takes for them uh -huh. for a day or a couple of days or a week. Same thing with water. Usually they're pretty good. And as far as clipping <laughs> the eggs, they can sit for a couple of days. You be just fine. Yeah, our, our feeder and water, they could go an easy two, maybe three, depending on how hot it is outside. Oh, okay. If it's hot, the water start. not only are they drinking it, but it's evaporating. But um, easy, at least two days. But you, you do need a babysitter if you're gone for a week. How long do you, um, in between cleanings, like how, how often do you clean the coop? As often as your wife makes you. <laughs> I'm just wondering how I, I, how dirty do they get, and do they just go all over the ground, and how do you clean it? I, I have no idea. Well, why don't you show them when we get outside there, and, and you can see it inside the, yeah. the lane area. There's We have a place where it's got screen, where they go through, and it goes into a drawer where you can dump it out. But it still gets stuck in the screen, oh. and so you just have to clean it out when it's to the point where, I mean, you can tell. It depends on the chicken. and. How long it takes and how many you have. And, so if and you, you clean it out more in the summer because it would smell more uh -huh. than the winter. And if you can't use it in the garden or composting or just throw it anything out. else, just bag it the up. fence line so all the fence gets weed free. Or is, it, is it really toxic? Do you have to wear gloves? And well, yeah. No. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't use, I use gloves, but I don't use like a respirator no, sure. or breathing no, after no, sure. and, and I'm still alive, barely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was just wondering if you had a preference of what kind of stuff to put on the ground to clean. Like, do you put down pea gravel? Do you put down, like, what do you use for your baits and stuff? We just use, well, ours originally was grass, but they took care of that really fast. That's perfect. I mean, it was gone within a day. They had oh. eaten it to the ground. And they, they would make a great mower. Can you can you give them your grass, grass clippings, or is that dangerous because they've been fertilized? It, you would be. I'd be very careful if um, if you. Do they get too much of that kind of stuff. It'll it'll cause some problems in the digestion system. But if you want to just grab some grass and pull a couple hands full and throw it, they can usually go that too. Yeah, that's but nothing what, like your lawn where you can dump it in there. And, uh, yeah, that's what we do. We just go around and we'll get a handful of of grass and then just toss it in there. I, I met somebody once who said they'll eat practically anything. Like they had leftover noodles and they didn't eat them they all. They'll, they'll eat everything. Well, it, does that affect the quality of the egg, what mm -hmm. they eat? The only thing is, is if you're feeding them something with the calcium, then that goes directly to the shell of the egg. But it really, um, the nice thing is, is if they're free roaming chickens, so if you let them run around your yard, you're going to get a little bit better omega 3s out of it because they're eating bugs and worms, things with protein, a lot higher mm -hmm. protein content than what they're getting out of their leg. When you when you buy bags from Cal Ranch or IFA, it'll have a percent of protein, percent of calcium on it. And so uh, free roaming chickens will have a little bit better um, vitamin Do they eat your flowers and things like that too? No, if it's greens of any 
piece of work for you. So really... If you like it, they like it. Well, so I know. Just let us know either. But yeah. okay, I can see like your garden. I, yeah. My garden is fenced off, but will they eat everything else in the yard? I I don't know if they'll eat your flower, like your flower beds or stuff. I think it depends on how much space they have, because if they would have a choice, they'll choose the, the sweeter, more tender. Or will they just eat your grass, walk around and eat your grass? They like to scratch, so yeah, they're like a rototiller, so they might chew up things even though they don't eat it. Oh. Yeah, they'll, they'll go around, they love to eat. Like the egg. You, you oh, originally going back, grass. yes. yes okay, going it's... back to that question, sorry. Okay. Um, so it was originally grass, <laughs> now it's just dirt. Um, we've just left it dirt. They, they like to dig holes. We, we fill them back up. They <laughs> dig a new hole. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, they, they'll take dirt baths. Um, they'll dig huh. little nesting holes. I've just seen I don't know about personally gravel to me would be kind of a pain to clean. Yeah. So yes. Now you, I think you said they eat worms, but they eat these big night crawlers. Uh huh. It, if you want to watch something yeah. fun, toss a night crawler into a cave oh. and uh, find your <laughs> oh. that, That's entertaining. <laughs> they'll they'll like fight and run. Tug of war. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with your chickens in the coop the entire time, how do you allow them to a take a dirt bath, you know, get rid of mites and such? And second one, uh, they like to eat little small rocks and pebbles help the digestive area. So so how do you help them do that without free roam? Um, eat scratch helps. let them out to roam around. They just seem to have more fun just scratching everything, digging everything up. So, so how, like she talked about having her garden fence, and how high of a fence does it take to keep them out? Not very high, because they can fly, you know. Probably. We used to have a barn, we used to have uh, the rafters up about 12 feet, and they'd fly up there and roost at night. But, they're not gonna. They're not gonna make an effort to go over it. If it's you know much more than a couple feet. They're gonna try to find a hole to squeeze through before they try to fly over it. Like I let them out last summer, and they squeezed through the hole into my neighbor's yard, and I was like, oh great, and it's all wooded brush crap, and I just waited long enough. She finally. So can you just go and walk and, and get them to try to get them back in their pan? If, they'll, or are they'll, they kind of mine will run, They'll play with me and make me run around the coop 20 times. <laughs> <laughs> so, But then I usually just get one of the kids. So I chase them around one side, and when they see the door open, they just run inside. Mm -hmm. so. Two questions. Last one's for me. Okay. <laughs> Um, I know there was some concern about arsenic in the chicken feed that you buy at the store. I was wondering if you buy like a specific brand or because there was that case a couple of years ago of arsenic poisoning. And then, um, do you vaccinate your chickens? We, most of the chickens you buy from a hatchery um, come pre-vaccinated. That's why they're a little bit more expensive usually. Uh, that's one thing I forgot to mention. You can raise your own in an incubator, your own eggs, fertilized eggs, you can get those. But you need to get them vaccinated once they hatch. Um, most chicks you buy um, will already come vaccinated, so you don't have to worry about it. What do you vaccinate them against? What's that? What are they vaccinated against? Um, Sorry, I don't know. They'll catch certain diseases. Just chicks will die really easy, really quick if you're not careful. Any other questions? So I 
Santa Fe or and the feed Cal chicken chicks or oh, those yes. chicks are vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're going to pay two and a half, three dollars, um, sometimes four dollars per chick. Whereas if you get an unvaccinated chick, if you buy it from somebody on KSL, you may find them for a dollar or something. So they're a little bit cheaper. So. Does the city give you difficulty about the quail or? No, the, there's a city ordinance that you can actually have cooped quail. Um, we're, we kind of have a special, because two of the properties are owned by the same, by President Camille, we have special permission to have certain, because we have more chickens than we're allowed. Well, it's because we've got permission to actually have enough for two properties. So, uh, but the city on quail, there's quail and pigeons kind of fall in the same category. You can have like ten birds. And quail aren't regulated by the state or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And we're about to get bees, so <coughs> we're going through that whole <laughs> ordeal right now. So. so I have a question. You probably already did talk about this, but what are the ordinances for South Jordan? Um, Oh, if you signed up for that, it'll be... It'll be yeah, on that. Yeah, if you put your email on there, it'll be on there. Six, six chickens, basically. And for what amount of land? For 10,000 square feet. Which is about which a third of an acre? A uh, quarter of an acre. Quarter. Yeah. Okay. So if you have more land, you can have more chickens? No, no it's six, is just it? six Residence. of an R-rated property. So what if you don't have six? I mean, what if you have ten? As long as they're not in the same place and they can't count them all at the start. Got a couple over now. In our neighborhood, is that it had a regulation of 40 feet away from your neighbor. Oh. Yeah, wow. that, that makes that's the that, that, the that will be the heart. Yeah, Who's 40 feet from the dwelling makes it difficult. Street? And yeah. I think if you have a neighbor that yeah. they're going to be okay. Not mm -hmm. a pain in the butt. Then is it because they're noisy or stinky or what? They're probably a little bit. Smellier than it, up like close. Uh -huh. Government yeah. people like to make rules and they just do it. Mm -hmm. so because they can. Yeah, yeah. just I think you use common sense. Yeah. They're, they're noisy. Don't make your neighbors mad with a bunch of roosters. Yeah. And, and, and why is it not a rooster? Do you need a rooster? No. Okay. You don't think you need a rooster once. The reason roosters are not allowed is one crow early and late. Um, our chickens make a little noise once the sun comes up, but it's hardly noticeable, really. I don't notice it, really. Um, they make noise when they lay. Um, I would, too, if I had to. <laughs> 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 yeah. And going back to your feed, I just buy the cow ranch brand, whatever. Go look at your coop. Yep, let's, let's head outside. They, they, so love, they love the light. They sound like little, they? little sparrows or something. And, and these little feeder and water thing you can get at Cow Ranch or IFA for, they're only like $5 a piece. They're great for your chicks. Um, so, so that's, this is. Throw this together however you can. We just used a Rubbermaid tub the first week when they're really little. Mm -hmm. And just put a light on it to keep them warm. And as you can see there, they kind of regulate themselves mm -hmm. when, they're, mm -hmm. when they're cold, they'll get closer to the light. When they're warm, they'll, they'll go off and play somewhere else. So. Is that a different feed than you use for the regular? Yes, they, this is a beginner feed. Mm -hmm. Um, it's more nutrient based for growth than to lay. Once they get to about 12 weeks, we'll start giving them laying feed to start getting them ready for when they uh, start laying that first egg. And their first egg will come kind of odd looking. And kind of form. So. How much do you think it costs you to maintain them? And and all that goes into them on a maybe a monthly or yearly basis. Monthly basis from start. Um, right now, probably 
15 to 20 dollars a month for the little ones once they get bigger it's just a flat about 20 dollars that's just for a bag of feed so. so this is more of your hobby it's not to i mean it's just people who have chickens it's more for fun right yes because it doesn't save you any money whatsoever well yeah. you get better better eggs better eggs, better eggs you're getting better you kind of have to weigh it kind of like oh, but you are not saving any money that's right yeah no kidding <laughs> but if you do it i suggest you start saving egg cartons um then you don't have to buy those either you just uh, half my eggs don't fit in egg cartons, so you have to cut the tops off and just set them in. So. so remember, you're all excited about eggs, but yeah, because we have a few chickens that aren't laying anymore. Uh -huh. So we're probably going to destroy them and replace them. And then we have a family member that wants some, so we're kind of raising them for them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This is Molly. Oh, Molly. She's, yeah. she's the head hand. As you can see, um, our coop actually has walls to go on it during the winter time. They're just back here. I just took them off so you could see inside. Protects from the wind going in. They don't like the snow. They don't like to get wet. Um, has a the roof is plexiglass so it's see-through um, this is this is the fairly typical type of feeder just fill it it drains down as as they eat it and this is some chickens like a crumble some like a mix our chickens will not eat the mix whatsoever, so we have to buy them the crumble for whatever reason. <laughs> they're, they're picky. And, and that just hangs that, from that hang ceiling? You can, you can just hang it up or you can set it on something. We hang it up because it's if nice. it's on the ground, yeah. they will make a mess in it. Okay. They'll put dirt in it. They'll. How many do you have in here? I have eight. And then I have a metal water container that has a heated base, so the heat comes from below and then um, keeps the water from freezing. So. so what kind of sides do you have? Are they these acrylic? This side stuff, is an, this side is an acrylic. I see. So you can see through it. This side is just a, is a, just a regular board, so it protects from the wind blowing through. So are these considered medium, large? These are large. So they're over seven or? These hens weigh about mm, six pounds. The males would weigh about eight pounds. What's their breed, Justin? These are red stars. Red stars. So when they were hatched, they're sex linked. So when they were hatched, they were a light brown, the females, and the males were black but they turn out to be this same color. <laughs> so then you have to, I don't know what you're doing with the black ones. And I then don't really want to know. These roosting poles I've made so I can lift them up, so mm -hmm. I can get inside. We walk inside the whole front face plate can be pulled off. We have access to the entire roosting plate. So she just goes in and cleans it up. <laughs> That's the heated. Oh, he's so just got hooked on. Okay, I'm gonna just show the little door here. My little hand. Now watch him come out and get me. Can I peek at you? Okay, I'm like completely unfocused. Oh, there. Oh, hello, chicken. There we go. I got a backup. Sorry for the taping quality here. Little chicky door. So why do we have the bottom one down here? That's just 
it's just more dirt for them down More below. dirt to play. And then with these ones, you can open these up this way. Oh, he can clean it under here. It's more dirt for them to be in. And play in. It's their little hiding spot. And they go to the room. <laughs> and then how does that? That just pulls out for cleaning. Oh. So it's only underneath this it's one. Underneath this upper oh, okay. So, yeah. You saw there was mesh wire in there. Yeah. So oh, that's cool. And, you can just clean that out. and then these are their lane boxes. Yeah, I think so. Lane boxes. Let's see if there's anybody home. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, there is. Don't want to disturb you, Miss There, Hen. you get a good picture of a uh, bump. Yeah, close up, there might be a little bump. <laughs> action there. Is that sound going to be on when we. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Sorry about that. Okay, yeah, well this is a... <laughs> as long as it's a chicken butt pucker, we're okay. Okay. Just